Britain's big teaching unions have accused the embattled Tory Prime Minister Boris Johnson of making the decision to save his own political backside because of Partygate. Where do you stand on this, masks and all? Oh, I mean, look, I just think it's absolutely disgraceful, actually, that children are still in masks. So, you know, we've now got a period when adults are living basically restriction free and what possible justification can there be for having having children in in these things for you know what eight hours a day it goes far beyond anything adults require to do and i think the really interesting unless thing unless is that, you unless you're on tfl because sadiq khan's insisted that continues in london of course because he's ignoring the government as well well, yeah, I mean, but if you're on TFL, if you're on the tube, you're on it for what, half an hour? These are kids. These are kids at a crucial time of their development, and they are in these things for the majority of their conscious hours. It's abhorrent. Yeah. And actually, it's, you know, what makes it worse, I think, is that these schools appear to be basically making the rules up as they go along. I mean, we had hundreds and hundreds of emails in the last 24 hours. We just couldn't believe it because we thought the mask mandate had gone and we thought, you know, thank, thankfully, finally, they've seen sense and a little, you know, snippet of equity for our children. And then we just had this inbox that was just so dispiriting and so upsetting and and parents are just devastated about this because where does it end jeremy where's the off ramp how, how do we end this for children now because it is over for adults but it's not for kids i find it i mean there's there's so many levels that i have a problem with this i i have a, a pro i agree with you i i feel like we have to to get on with our lives uh and i have three kids at school and i know from them talking to me about some of their friends that it can be difficult for some kids my daughter has really struggled through her mock gcse she has um you know she has uh, had a really tough time and as fact was talking to me on the phone last night and crying about it and telling me that there are kids who are really struggling the other thing is and i don't want to start a huge debate this morning but uh, teaching unions um i'm sorry you should follow official advice shouldn't you at what point did anybody say whatever you think of boris johnson right now at what point did anybody say it's all right for teaching unions to avoid what is law or official comment from the government where did they get that power from molly i don't understand no and i think this is the thing where do they get the moral right to crush children in this way because that is what this is doing and you know i understand there was a time when everyone was very concerned about the safety of the school population of course, of course. but honestly that school population has been offered three vaccines and for a, for an illness that thankfully is not going to harm most of them anyway and it, it just it reflects so badly actually on the teaching profession and actually it reflects badly on every single adult involved in this because when you look back at the photos of this period as people will we're going to see adults in sports stadium in nightclubs in Absolutely. packed venues going in offices going around their normal lives and we're going to have these photos of children masked and it's 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 awful and it shouldn't be happening and the other thing as well is it's there's just no evidence base for it so you know not only is this morally ridiculous it is it, illogical it makes no sense and i'm probably wrong but i am a parent so i have a right to an opinion i thought teachers uh worked for parents and kids i thought they were paid to support what i thought schools were about kids and, and parents i'm sort of with you i mean um I mean, what are you hearing from parents what are you hearing from kids have you spoken to kids at all yeah, we have a lot of kids. And so there's this whole myth that kids don't mind this. Well, that is a myth, is by not, the way. That is a myth. It, it's a myth. And you know what? It's not even a myth. Let's call it, let's call it what it is. It's a lie. Yeah. It's a lie put out there by grown-ups to make themselves feel better about the way they are abusing. And I know that is a strong word, and it is a word that I have resisted using. But at this point, I do think this is institutionalised child abuse, and it needs to be called out as such. And we have, for parents that are concerned, we're going to put a letter up on our site uh, later this morning that should be up, and they will be able to get a letter to their school. And actually, lots of these schools are acting, we believe, unlawfully. So if you feel that you have an issue with this, then, you know, you tell your school that. The business secretary uh, has just spoken, actually, on television, Crazy Kotang, and he was asked about this, and he said, uh, schools should follow official guidance. How schools are run is for teachers and parents. The Prime Minister has been clear that we don't need to wear face masks. And just to, just to make that discussion even bigger, Molly, right, so when this all started, um, this is, and, I, and I'm going to act like a complete dumb individual and somebody's going to text me or call me, we all got jabbed or we didn't. Let's not start that debate. 
<laughs> and, and I couldn't understand why my kid who was 12 at the time or 11 at the time and is now 30, you don't need a mask till you're 13. But suddenly from being 12 and 365 days, you don't. And then one day later, you do and all of that because it wasn't about the kids. Then kids are being jabbed. But you make a really salient point, which is we've been told, well, you can watch 50,000 people watching Liverpool Arsenal last night in the Carabao Cup. And yet the kids are going to school this morning in a face mask. I don't understand that. Are we getting the two together on this? I'd love to know this. Stay right there, Molly. Uh, this is Glyn Pot. Head teacher of Newman College. Uh, Glyn, good morning. Welcome to Talk Breakfast. Good morning. Uh, are you on Zoom? Or, oh, you are. There you are. <laughs> Brilliant. There I am, right in the middle again. Uh, Glyn, uh, where do you stand on this, please? Well, I, I understand it's a contentious issue, but my goal is to make sure my school remains open and as safe as possible for children. That, that's, it, that's it. I rely on the uh, evidence that's provided by the experts, and I'm certainly not insisting or forcing children to wear masks. But in my area at the moment, the, uh, the infection rate is above 2,000 per 100,000. So it's still very high. I've had 40 cases this week. And whilst I accept it may not be leading to hospitalisation or serious illness, which I'm really pleased about, it still leads to significant disruption. And what we're doing here is we're balancing a number of risks. We're not necessarily saying we've got the perfect solution. What do you say to people who would say two things to you? And I want to bring Molly in in a minute. One, you're stunting children's growth and their development. But more than that, Mr Potts, you are going against official government guidance. What right do you have to make that decision? I'm not going against government guidance at all. I'm just making sure that the children can make an informed choice. If they don't wish to wear their masks, that's absolutely fine. As of the 27th, uh, when we are able to remove masks in communal areas, that is what we will do and offer that to the children too. I don't want to stunt children's growth, and I'm not here to defend a government policy on mask wearing. I'm here to make sure I sell the, the hard-working effort of education staff to keep schools open, because that's where children should be. That's where they're going to get the best benefit. Molly, how do you say to that? Look, I mean, I think there's a couple of points there. And first of all, I think no one can dispute that the intention might be good here to stop school yep. disruption. So, you know, thank you for that, Glyn. But I think, I think what we've got here, we've got this situation where we've got these very artificial rules now, which basically say at any hint of cases, which, as you say, Glyn, are not leading to hospitalizations, thankfully, they're not leading to death, there will be disruption. And I have some sympathy with school leaders because actually the issue to our mind here is this bonkers regime where we're all testing like crazy and finding cases. So I do understand that, and I think that has to go. And if we're really determined to live with COVID, let's stop you know, OCD, <laughs> testing our children and ourselves and let's just get on with life and accept there may be some transmission in the community, but if it's not causing hospitalizations, who cares? And then I think the second point, though, is, you know, we talk about giving children the option to wear a mask and, and that being informed consent. And I think this is where I have an issue because actually what we have seen throughout this is there is a huge pressure to conform. So we hear all the time from parents and from children as well directly that actually they don't want to wear these things. They don't like it. But if they don't go in wearing the mask, they will be the only one not wearing them in their school. And that is a really difficult thing for a child to do. It's something that the vast majority of adults don't manage to do. Let so, you know, the compliance with these yeah. measures has been Huge. If I can just jump in, I, I, I get where you're coming from, Glyn, to to a degree. And, and I think part of the problem is, and I think Molly would agree, I think is the different messages that have been sent out for two years. And I absolutely stand shoulder to shoulder with you, Glyn, when you say we need our kids to be back at school. Seriously, the, the, the problems that have happened for all kids, the length and breadth of this country by not being at school will be felt for generations. I genuinely believe that. But you said that kids can make an informed decision, and I think Molly's right to touch on that. Is there a process? So in your school, do, do parents have to send in a, a letter or an exemption form, or can a kid... I, my daughter said to me the other day, and this is absolutely relevant, she walked into a lesson uh, without a mask on, and ten of them had them on and two didn't, and the ones that didn't got slagged off by those. And there is the real reality of what's going in. Either you have one rule or you have the other rule. We're in, we're in confusion, aren't we, Glyn? I disagree. I think we're doing a disservice to the maturity of the children. But, but equally, there's a side of this argument that's not in this conversation, which is those parents who fundamentally believe that we're not doing enough to protect yeah. their children. Yeah. And schools are having to balance that on a daily basis. I, I accept fully. I can't talk about what happens in, in other schools. I can only talk about my own. Uh, and I believe my students are making informed choice. There is no threat of detentions if you don't wear a mask. There is no challenge 
We are simply giving them the option. There is free masks available entry to school. If they choose to wear them in their lessons, they can do. We've got to get through this with parents and children with us because the children have suffered enough. And, and also what I will say uh, before I finish this, I, I will say this. We do know that Omicron has seemingly been more prevalent amongst school kids. I have so many friends who have not had COVID but have got it because of their kids at school. So I get that. I think we all want the same thing, don't we, as parents, as teachers, uh, Molly as well. We want our kids back at school. We want their education to be back on track. We don't want them sat in a room in front of a computer screen hour after hour. Their mental health implications of that and everything else. I guess there is sort of... The problem is we've had different messages and it's how different areas, different schools, different students and different parents judge that and let's hope further down the line we can come up with one message and move on this is talk radio at exactly quarter to eight